Welcome to Exploring the Marketplace. My co-host is Bob Hassan, and we are creating a conversation with Christian marketplace leaders who have careers that have been impacted by their faith. We are also answering your questions about entrepreneurship, business leadership, careers, and how the kingdom of God changes your impact in the marketplace. Come join the conversation. We're so now. glad you're here to explore the marketplace with us, where we talk about people and their careers from all areas of industries around the world. Well, today we got somebody from the film industry, Bob. Let's talk about this guest today. Yep. Sean, today we have Daryl Lefevre. Daryl's been in the film industry for 30 years and spent 15 of them as a feature film controller, traveling to locations around the world for up to a year at a time. His studio credits include X-Men, The Polar Express, Nancy Drew, Where the Wild Things Are, The Lucky One, and The Wild Wild West. He's worked for directors uh, Tom Hanks, Robert Zemeckis, Roland Emmerich, Spike Jones, and George Miller. In 2008, Daryl decided to focus on producing Christian-themed filmmaking. His wow. credits include Faith of Our Fathers, Amazing Love, Mom's Night Out, Woodlawn, I Can Only Imagine, Unplanned, American Underdog, wow, that was a great movie, and The New Jesus Revolution. Wow. I just love this. And I love that God's deploying so many people who were more in the mainstream kind of entertainment market and he's saying, hey, use this for my kingdom now. And that's exactly what our guest is going to talk to us about today. So stay tuned. Coming up next. Spiritual Growth Academy intends to give you classes that are going to help develop your inner spiritual life and also do the heavy lifting of your spiritual growth journey, especially when it comes to hearing God's voice, developing intimacy, all of the spiritual gifts, these kinds of themes that you don't always have an opportunity to take a class within your local church, or maybe you missed it and it was three years ago. Well, we have classes that are going to help you today. And we come from such a biblical based foundation. You're going to feel safe with our instructors. You're going to have activations. You're going to have ways to pray and think about things, but especially you're going to have impartation. And that's one of the key ways to grow is through impartation that happens through each one of our classes. I want to invite you to attend a class now. Well, welcome back, Sean. We're here with Daryl Lefevre. Daryl, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Bob and John. It's great to be here. Well, we're so glad you're here. And I thought it was so interesting that you're producing this movie about the Jesus People movement, basically. And I think it's like coming out in 2023 when we're probably that kind of place in the nation again, in the nations where people are hoping for another move of God like this or hoping for another move of salvation. But you're doing, I think it's prophetic or it's a God moment or it's serendipitous that it's in this time because you have major actors in this movie that are completely relevant and current. And then it's telling a story that everybody wants to hear again in the church to happen on a mass way. What does this mean to now? Like, why did you guys decide to make this movie right now? Actually, uh, I feel like the Lord decided that. We were going to make it two years ago. Hmm. Oh, wow. And then uh, we, we were actually prepping to film in Los Angeles. Uh, and COVID hit. Yeah. And shut everything down. Right right when we, we were two weeks out from starting to film. We had props, oh, deck, wow. wardrobe, all purchased. And uh, COVID hit, shut everything down, and um, we we kind of thought the film wasn't going to come back. Like it was, it was you know so hard to go through all that and have already done all that, and um, and of course we you know we lost kind of the the window filming in LA and everything. And then fortunately, you know John Irwin and, and Lionsgate just talked about it again and kind of resurrected the film. And oh, wow. uh, and uh, this this time we shot it in Alabama. For all the interiors and then we shot the exteriors all the la stuff in orange county where, where it actually took place and the yeah. places where greg and kathy went on dates and you know the pirates cove or all these people got baptized it still come still come up to me and say hey i got baptized and got saved on pirates cove and uh so that was really amazing just to be able to film there and uh, it's where greg still does greg Laurie still does baptisms it's you know still his church goes out oh there oh my gosh so it's really really cool well daryl let's back up and talk about how you got into your film career and how that all worked. Yeah. So I, I, um, I, you know, I grew up in an area, I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is very rural, very, um, you know, lots, lots of farm. I grew up working on a dairy farm. Um, you know, <laughs> my parents, not that it wasn't my parents' farm, but I worked up, grew up working on a farm and you pretty much where I grew up, you pretty much become, you know, either you go to college and become an engineer or teacher, or you pick up a trade and you become an, uh, you know, an electrician or a plumber. Like that's kind of the, yeah. That's, that's what you do. You know, I mean, those are the things, those are the options. So working in entertainment, you know, working in film was not even something that was discussed or whatever. <laughs> I, you know, I was in musicals in high school and I did all those kind of artsy things, but um, just wasn't really an option. And uh, I was 26 years old 
and I, I didn't really like my job, didn't really like what I was doing, felt really stifled and, and everything. And my best friend at the time said, well, what would you do if you could do anything? And I was 26 and nobody ever asked me that before. You know, nobody wow. ever said that to me, you know, what would you do if you could do anything? And I said, well, I'd make movies, who wouldn't? And he said, well, why don't you? <laughs> and so I, I wow. went, my, my wife was pregnant with our first son and, um, and I, I did, I waited till the baby was born and, and we left and I started embarking on this crazy career. And my amazing wife has followed me literally all over the world. Uh, working on films, you know, in Australia and Thailand and Canada, wow. you know, everywhere. So it's been all over the U.S. Um, so it's really been it's really been great. And uh, our kids are grown now, and our, even our kids look back on it fondly. You know, well, they're they're mm -hmm. uh, we have grandkids now. So, but our kids will look on it like uh, you remember that time we were in Toronto. Remember that time we were in Australia, and you know, so it, wow. it really worked out to be great. Which I just I thank the Lord for that they that they feel that way about it. But, uh, but yeah, that's how I got in. Just I love how it affected their trajectory too. Cause if you just stayed where you were at in a small town, their career choices and who they would right. become would be limited to where you were at. And yet you as a dad and a grandpa grabbing hold of your calling, it's, I'm sure it's affecting their generation, but I don't want to go there. I want to go actually to like, this is a pretty intense thing because a lot of the people who come to industry, they don't come from families who are in the industry. And so mm -hmm. you came from nowhere Right. And said, which is what most people do. And you came in and you started working for real in the entertainment industry. Talk about the challenges of that. Talk about like what, what was happening in early in your career and what made you stay? Yeah, my very first job was actually working for free for people that were working for free. I was um, in, interning on student films at uh, oh, yeah. Regent, Regent University in, in Virginia Beach. And I had a friend that was going to college there and I went down and uh, interned on three student films. And honestly, after doing that, I was, I mean, I got bit. I mean, I was, I was in, I'm like, I, at, at 26 years old, I'm like, I'm a lifer. I'll be doing this when I'm 76, you know? And um, so I, I, and I, I still feel that way. <laughs> like, I don't think there's anything else I'll ever be doing. Um, and I, I just loved it, loved all the things that it brings together. I mean, I love, the idea of, of just film in general and just photos. I love, I love photography. So, so lighting and then color, and then you throw in acting and then you throw in music. And I mean, just all the elements of a film are just all my favorite things. Right. So, um, so I was thrilled to be a part of it. Um, then from there made friends, worked on a, that we were working actually in the industry as opposed to <laughs> working for free. Um, Cause it did have a wife and a kid at the time. So uh, <laughs> to kind of find a way to have it generate an income. And uh, then came out to LA and really started at the bottom. You know, started off as a as an office PA, um, getting bagels in the morning and uh, making copies of scripts and running around back lots and delivering things and whatnot. You know, it, I mean, it, very bottom. And um, uh, but always, 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 the intention always was to produce things that honored the Lord. Like that was just always wow. on my heart. You know, from when when I moved out. And um, I, you know, I was fortunate enough that that most of my career, even when I worked for Disney and Warner Brothers and uh, and Fox and whatnot, like um, I always worked on stuff that was, for the most part, really family friendly. Even if, you know, it wasn't necessarily a faith film, but I never really was faced with uh, like really questioning projects until a little later. You know, that did come up, but uh, for the most part, I I got to work on things that that I really felt like were were stuff I could have my grandparents watch. You know. Nice. <laughs> So. What was what was your mindset as you're married with a child, you're starting at the bottom, you're making copies and getting coffee. What was your mindset? I mean, how, how did you think about in the future that this is where I'm going and it's a stepping stone, it's a process. So many people now are looking for a quick fix and and uh, or, or some kind of cheat code to get to where they're going next. Yeah, I think. I think a lot of it is I just kept trying to find people that I really admired what they mm. did. Um, and, and one of them would be somebody you probably know, Ralph Winter. You probably know that I name. Love him. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I got to work with Ralph in the um, late nineties, like 96. He did some of the X-Men movies, Bob. Yeah. 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 I, did, yeah. I even did Mighty Joe Young with yeah. Ralph before doing X-Men movies. Awesome. Um, and, and so that was really early in my career. I was only in a business probably four years at that point. And um I just, I, I love the way that he interacted with people and crew and, and people felt, I, th I think the biggest thing that I felt I learned from, from working with Ralph was I felt like people felt honored when they went into him with mm. an issue or a problem, whatever, they felt heard. 
you know, and I feel like so many people just like, oh, we, you know, we can't afford that. The answer is no, or yeah. that's a terrible idea or whatever. And Ralph just really made people feel heard, even, even if the answer was no, which ultimately a lot of times it is as a producer, yeah. the answer is no. But he still made him, made him feel like, like he, he absorbed what they were saying, gave, you know, credence to the, what they brought to the table. And so that was something that I really grabbed onto and felt like yeah. as I sort of climb up through the ranks, um, which, you know, hopefully that was always the intention, you know, is to yeah. work my way up through and get to produce films. And and so doing that, I really wanted to do that. I really wanted to honor people that, you know, they've put in time too, to be here and and yeah. to do it, to specialize in their craft and bring their expertise to the to the to the table. And so I wanted to make people feel like I'm I'm I am hearing them. You know, I am hearing what they're what they're saying. Tell us about a time when you were kind of coming you you referred to it a minute ago, but um, you're coming into more, you're getting more opportunities and you had to turn down a project based on your faith. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I had been at Warner Brothers for about 12 years uh, working as a as a financial controller kind of person. So I would actually go out on location. I wasn't I wasn't an employee. I was a freelancer, but I would go on locations. They'd send me, like I say, Australia a couple of times and Canada and whatnot all over the place and um, and work on these films and I'd work hand in hand with the producers to make sure we could afford every decision that was made and, and, and all that from a, from a finance point of view and try to keep the film on, on budget. And, um, and so I, I was at, like I say, I was at Warner brothers and a film came up and this, uh, that th th was a really good opportunity for me. It was a promotion. It was more money. Everything about it was seemed great. And so I had an interview with the, with the producer and I met her and, and I said, you know, Tell me about the film. What is it? You know, and she goes, "Oh, it's called Queen of the Damned," and I was like, "You know, I'm 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 not familiar with that. What is that?" She goes, "Oh, it's a great story. The the Queen of Hell is looking for a mate, so she goes to a goth concert, and she opens up hell so that all the all the people at the concert fall into hell, and then she goes on stage and she she procreates with the lead singer so that she can become pregnant and she can give birth to the next." next queen of king of hell you know and i'm like that's not a story i'm familiar with <laughs> and um, so i went home and i told my wife about it and i was like um like am i supposed to be light in a dark place here like what you know, what's going on like what is this what how do i make this decision like you know what what is the the answer here and i called a pastor friend of mine um and jonathan hunter who's uh, uh just somebody i really admire he lives in pasadena and um been around the industry forever and i said you know this is the situation like i'm being offered this film it's a great promotion but what should i do and he said well daryl look i'm not gonna tell you you can't do that movie like um but if you do that movie you just have to understand that you're putting yourself under the authority mm. of people that want to make that movie right mm -hmm. um and i was like wow like that that's an interesting way of looking at it you know it's not not so much a you know yes or no or this is whatever good idea bad idea or god's will or whatever that means you know it was just like you're that's that you have to know that you're doing that um so i kind of sheepishly went back into warner brothers and, and said you know i i really don't think i want to work on this project um you know and they asked why because they were concerned you know it was, it was afraid it was too big a project or whatever and i said no i said just you know my name being on it forever and um and I was concerned because I was afraid they're going to say like, well, you know, if you don't want to work on our movies, you can go work on somebody else's, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but actually the response I got was, I think it's because I've been there so long and had developed a relationship with them. The, the answer I got was, oh, well, if you really care about the projects you work on, then why don't we find you something else? That's no problem. Wow. Um, that's and so, yeah, I was like, well, that's amazing. Um, and and I did. And and the, the really the amazing part about that is, um, I actually got to do another film that went to Australia um, was such was a highlight from our whole family. We went to a church there called Planet Shakers um, that we just kind of happened upon. While we were there. Yeah. 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 And we um, we went to their conferences. We got so involved. We got to know the pastors uh, and um, and our kids came alive there. You know, just that that the, this youth group called Boom was like 700 kids. Just wow. Yeah. And um, and it, it was really a turning point for us. And. Uh, that's actually where I, it was at Planet Shakers that I found out about 
Bethel Church, actually, about Bill Johnson and Bethel. Oh, wow. uh, they handed me this book and said, this is required reading for all Planet Shaker staff. You might want to check it out. And it was called Dreaming with God, Dreaming with oh. God by this guy, Bill Johnson. And I was like, I, I didn't know anything about him. So, um, so yeah, then we went on to live, both my kids did BSSM and we lived in Reading and went to Bethel for seven years. So uh, obviously, the, you know, it, all, it all had a big turning point in our life. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just felt so blessed that, um, that even though I turned down something that um, I really felt like was not something God was calling me to do that, that I was so blessed in, in response yeah. to it. Um, and then later I was in a, in a, in a, a, a conference room with a woman who was complaining about this movie she did in Australia. And I was like, it's like, really? Like I did a movie in Australia. It was awesome. Like we wanted to move there. We thought it was amazing. She said, Oh, it was horrible. The producers were mean and the, the offices didn't have air conditioning and the, the hotel they put us in was terrible. And I was like, well, what was the name of the movie? And she was, Queen of the Damned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great picture. Yeah. I mean, what a great picture. What a contrast. It was yeah. like the same right. trajectory, but one was with right. God and one was without. Right. I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. And that brings you to us to here. Like you're you're producing this movie. Tell us about you kind of told us a little bit in the beginning, but tell us about like the why. Why did you with Greg Laurie produce this movie by his story? Yeah, uh, so John Irwin, the director, John and Brent McCorkle are the, the two directors. John and, and uh, Greg have been friends for quite a while. They did a documentary about Steve McQueen a while back um, and uh, have kind of kept that friendship going. And even through Woodlawn, if you remember, if you saw Woodlawn's yeah. football movie that we did about the 70s, um, so that same time period. Um, and it was even, even John's dad, Hank, got uh, got went to uh, i think it was called expo 72 i always mess up the year but i think it was expo 72 and um with uh just a whole bunch of music larry norman was there and all these musicians were there and everything wow. and um billy graham obviously led it and came back and um so 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 much of that time period has impacted john's life and then you know most of the people that that are uh sort of people that i look up to as pastors and stuff all lived through that period i, yeah. I went to the vineyard for a while went to vineyard churches and then, of course, Bethel Church and with Bill and Chris. And I mean, all these people were people that were really kind of uh, products or either got saved or at least if they didn't get saved, they, they had it was a life changing experience going through the Jesus People movement in the early 70s. And, and so it's something that was close to all of us, you know, just important to, to all of us. And um, so when the opportunity came up to tell Greg's story, because um, it has, you know, it's love story element and Lonnie mm -hmm. Frisbee's in it and, you know, Chuck Smith. And he was just kind of at the epicenter of this amazing movement and he he got saved not only during it but then became a leader within it and you know had his own church and so it just felt like such a natural story if, if we want to tell a story about this time period it, it's, it's the one to tell yeah wow so, yeah. i love the fact that it's named jesus revolution and and i think um i was lucky enough to preview it and and, and love the movie movie and what do you hope happens out of the release of this I hope it sparks revival. We all do. I mean, really, that's the heart behind behind the making of the movie. Um, it 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 is about a revival, right? Yeah. And um, that's that's really our our prayer is that um, we feel like America is ripe again. We feel like there's so many similarities between yes. the division, you know, the division at that time or the, or the early '70s, um, and and the division that's in our world today, mm -hmm. um, especially yeah. in our nation and politically, and 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 just the, the separation and people feeling ostracized, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily have hippies today, but we certainly have a group of people that um, would feel like they wouldn't be welcome inside a church, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I, you know, that's, we just want to see, you know, the gospels for everybody. And we just want to see, see it spread again and see, um, see the spirit move. And yeah, it's really our heart really hard behind it. And it's so interesting because again, doing a lot of journalism and social commentary stuff on the side here. I mean, I'm on news programs every week. I do my own social commentary podcast and there's so much happening in the world right now. You're right. that The contrast is so similar to then versus the eighties or the nineties or wherever else, you know, like if you look at it, you know, and I, I, as soon as I saw the trailer, I didn't know you, you at all. I didn't know you were doing this. I was, shock kelsey grammar is in it and it just was like oh my gosh it's coming out in 2023 this is so ripe this is so time this is so this is what people have been prophesying about speaking about saying what happened and i think it's like it's on the screen first and to me the entertainment industry is always prophesying what god wants to do or or it's a foretelling what the enemy is trying to do and it's so perfect so 
I'm excited. I, I just, I know Bob was too. I'm just so excited that you guys said yes to God and you guys created such an incredible film. I do want to ask about Kelsey Grammer because he's in this film and he plays a prominent role of Chuck Smith. Talk about how did you guys get him involved and why did he want to do this project? So he was, he was top of the list to, to ask, right. To play Chuck Smith. I mean, you look at him, you know, it just, it just worked. You know, it just seems, just seems right. Um, and Honestly, uh, Kelsey's, Kelsey's had quite a spiritual awakening through the course of filming. Um, mm-hmm. But even beforehand, um, before he before he kind of got a little more definition to his faith, I'll put it that way, as did, you know, just spending time around Greg Laurie, it's hard to spend time around Greg Laurie and not hear the gospel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's just who he is. So um, even before that, he had cried out to God at that point, mm-hmm. just sort of, you know, God, um, and said, you know, I'm, I'm early seventies now. Uh, I only want to work on stuff that matters. You know, I mean, wow. I, I'm obviously in, you know, it's kind of the, the, the fall or early winter of my career, you know, kind of thing. Like I want to work on things that matter. And he got our script the next morning oh. and, and he read it. Yeah. He read it. And he was, he was like, I, I'm in, like, I'm in, like, I felt like God answered my prayer and, um, Yes. Whatever you want me to do. So yeah, so it was pretty, pretty amazing experience. Uh and really a, a very kind, gentle soul. Like he is who you think he's gonna be. Like he, yeah. he just never once was an issue or problem. Like really just a genuinely kind person. Um, so we it was it was a pleasure really to work with him. That's so awesome. Yeah. Wow. So how can people watch the movie and where should they go? Yeah, so it'll be uh in theaters on uh, February 24th nationwide it's in 3000 screens so it's every every city in America um, it uh, if you have a group that you want to take um, we've actually had some uh, very wealthy individuals that have really want to see this movie spread and work so we have almost an unlimited supply of free tickets for the night of February 22nd so the Wednesday before it comes out and wow. if, if, if you go to our page, um, JesusRevolution.movie, because <laughs> JesusRevolution.com was already taken. So, <laughs> so JesusRevolution.movie, um, there's, a, there's a place you can click out there. I think it's the upper left-hand corner. But there's a spot you can click on, and you can get uh, free tickets as long as it's a group of 10 or more. And the original intention behind it was because these people that had donated the, these funds um, actually wanted every youth group in America to go. That was the intention. Oh, like wow, every every cool. youth pastor in America can take his youth group, make it a Wednesday night event, you know, for free to take the youth group. Um, then we actually ended up, ended up having so many tickets donated that um, really any, uh, you know, any group, men's group, women's group, youth, youth group, Bible study. This is awesome. Group, this is so, I, you got to go to this movie and now you have no excuse not to go because all you need is nine other friends. Right. Yeah. You're going to go too. Well, thank you so much, Daryl, for being a part of this. And thanks for sharing the story. We, we needed to hear this. This is so hope filled. And I love just your personal story and the movie story. And we're going to go see it. We're, we're encouraging our audience to go see it. And up next, final thoughts with Sean and Bob. Sean and I wrote a new book called Wired to Hear based on a prophetic word that he had. And this word is all about you being wired to hear and the next great move of God happening in the marketplace around your life. So get the book anywhere books are sold. Welcome back to Final Thoughts with Sean and Bob. Sean, that interview was so interesting in so many different respects. I agree. I think it's really interesting that they're making this movie. I referenced it in the beginning of the interview where out of all times it could have been made. It could have been made in the 80s, the 90s. I mean, this was so relevant. I mean, this Jesus People movie thing with Lonnie Frisbee was on the cover of Time magazine. This was not a small subject. And like, I think it's 86% of pastors, according to Harold Everly's theological group of the, the Pacific Northwest, 86% of pastors who are in office today in America were saved during that period of time, whether it was through the Jesus People movement or after or, or you know, alongside of it. Mm-hmm. But I think that's just so incredible. You have all these people who that's what a move of God can do is it can position people in a much different way, including you guys, you and Lauren. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lauren and I both got saved at different times at Chuck Smith's church. Wow. And uh, it, it, for me, it was in 1978 or 77. And uh, it was an Easter Sunday and there was thousands of young people there. I mean, I remember I was dressed in hang 10 shorts and an OP shirt that's awesome. and, and, uh, that's awesome. and, and in flip flops. And I didn't, I mean, it was the craziest church you'd ever seen. And, and then, you know, later in my life, I became friends with Lonnie for the last 20 or so years of his life. He was in San Diego. So this film really, really was almost a coming home for me. Wow. And I just think about, if you're watching this or listening, one of the things that we want you to 
imagine is what if God's going to use your career or your business mm. or maybe your pastor or your church as the next place that a Greg Laurie gets saved at or the next place that a movement breaks out at, that your your office space could be a place where God brings revival. And I think that this film is so relevant to the fact that the world's so hungry right now. And there is so much of a division in humanity of any kind. Any kind of humanity right now is divided against something. It just feels like there's so much controversy and toxicity. And the antidote for that is the love of God. Right. I, I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because for a number of years at my shop, my warehouse, Lonnie stayed there because, you know, he didn't have a place. And so oh, I, wow. I would come kind of like after work and all of a sudden there's all these people. And I'm like, Lonnie, what are you doing? You can't. This is a business park. You can't be doing this. And he would just laugh at me and say, well, this is what we do. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it uh, um so, you know, when you said that about, you know, our workplaces being part of a revival, I felt like at that point in time, you know, later uh, in, in, his, in his life, he just was still doing the same things that we see in the movie. That's so wild. Well, I do want to encourage you, I know I already said it, but go see the movie with a group of people and ask God how he wants to bring a move through your life. You don't have to wait for it to be a global epidemic, a movement of God. You can you can have a move of God now with your friends and family, with your neighborhood, with your community, with your coworkers. Mm -hmm. Bring them to see this movie. It's free. It's a free way to go and see the gospel in a place that we're all used to going to. They may not come to church with you, but I bet you they'll go see a movie with Kelsey Grammer with you. So bring them and go to JesusRevolution.movie and you can bring them with you. Also, thanks for joining us today. We love you guys every time we hear from you. So make sure to comment, review this on any podcast service so other people can find out about it. And most of all, thank you for your generous donations and for becoming partners. We have so many of you who have become partners to help shows like this be made under our ministry. We make this one and we also have the Sean Bull Show, which is every Monday. So Wednesdays join us every week for Exploring the Marketplace, unless you're on CBN News where it's a weekend show. Thanks for joining for those us. For us who wonder what God has designed us for, do you have any suggestions for discerning God's will in our profession? <laughs> That's such a great question. That's a great question. So I started a business with a friend of mine who was a Christian out of our house. Mm. And it was it was directly mm. related to that conviction that God gave me. When people looked at my track record of being insanely profitable with my Holy Ghost model, made so much money, they will say, yeah. I love the, the favor thread that is coming through just as far as like, you know, being filled with opportunities that you didn't create yourself, that you just walked with God. born out of a passion to teach the global community how to connect to God's heart in a real way, to hear his voice for themselves and others, and to understand true spiritual identity. Bowles Ministries is leading the way in promoting the importance of the prophetic, walking through life process and discovering how to become the best version of yourself through resource materials, webinars, podcasts, prophetic and teaching videos, e-courses, and even TV hosting. Connect with us online or through our resources and product at events that we host or events that we are contributors to. We're seeing lives change and destinies discovered. Come join us, pioneer with us, create with us and thrive with us. Bulls Ministries.